What's up guys, more Medic One. Hey, I've got a newer Echo 2620 on the bench. It runs okay, but what I want to show you guys is whenever you are, operators especially, if you own one of these and you see how this top cover is all chewed up, this is what we call road rash. It didn't fall out of the back of a truck or anything. But what happens is whenever the operator is working on the head downstream on the shaft there, where is this engine? It's going to be bumped and dropped on the concrete. And what happens is the cover, and dang, these things have a good air filter. These are a, this is an awesome trimmer. You can see the road rash on the cover. Well, the intake manifold bolts and the carburetor mounting screws they'll get loose. Watch. And what it does is it causes an air leak between the carburetor and the intake block and then the intake block to the engine block. We need to take these screws out, inspect the gasket behind each one, and then we're going to add a little Loctite to these screws. Whenever the trimmer gets dropped and it hits on this a couple times, it will stretch those screws and it will physically become loose. And once it gets a little loose and vibration sets in, these screws will just come on out. And it'll eventually, the, car, <laughs> the whole dead gum uh, carburetor just fall off. It'll quit running because it's sucking too much air. And you could possibly burn up an engine if you let it go too far and you don't catch it. It's a super easy fix. The only tool you need is a T27. See that screw was loose. That one was loose. Now what's going to happen, you just kind of hold everything together and we can drop that carburetor down and what happens is whenever this thing starts getting loose and vibrating check this gasket out now this is where your air leak is going to come from because it compromises and basically the vibration wiggling back and forth wears this gasket out and this gasket is just gone there's nothing left this whole gasket assembly needs to be replaced this backing plate or heat dam slash gasket. If you just tighten that up, you're not going to do any good because, the, like I said, the gasket is just compromised. Alright, so let's go ahead on and remove the intake manifold. Just three screws. That one was good and tight. That one was okay. Check out the Loctite they put on there. Ain't that something? They don't want this thing coming off, and I think they know there's an issue. Go ahead and pull your carburetor adapter out of the intake boot. And then you're going to take a blunt pocket screwdriver and we're going to push the boot inwards. Like so, and then we'll remove the intake block. So basically, I'm this far in, all I want to do is I want to inspect my boot, make sure it's not ripped or torn. But I have to take this off right here because I want to apply a little Loctite to these mounting screws here. They have a little bit on them from the factory, a little bit of red, but heat cycles back and forth this stuff just crystallizes and basically does nothing so I'm going to put a little red Loctite on this screw 
put it back in, take this screw out, put a little red Loctite, screw it back in. Okay, now we can put the intake manifold cover, or I guess they just call it a heat dam. Go ahead and push your intake manifold back up through this heat dam. Push down right in the top corner of this gasket and basically pull it through, and then you can take your screwdriver and pop that out. And massage that boot with your finger, making sure that the sealing lip is correctly on there. Take your screwdriver and kind of massage, there it goes. Massage that gasket or that boot until it fills this whole cavity. Alright, so that portion is installed. Now we're going to reinstall our screws also with a little bit of red Loctite. Reinstall your carburetor adapter. Guys, I absolutely love these kinds of repairs because I know it helps some of you out. I'm going to go ahead and slide on a new gasket. We're going to give it just a touch of red thread locker. Go ahead and reinstall your air filter. Check your awesome pre cleaner. she is done we are going to just let this cure for about two hours before we crank it up and we'll be good to go guys hey we got that little echo srm 2620 going one more time hey if you own one of these just go check you can do the you can just check it real easy you can just grab the air filter and it'll wiggle if it does do this procedure and you won't have any more problems out of it so just be careful don't drop your trimmer and guys if this helped you out as always give me a thumbs up i'm actually working today i'm dirty 
and uh, smash that subscribe button. And while you're there subscribing, go ahead and click that bell to get all my new videos. Y'all have a good Tuesday. More Medic One.